Many years ago, we had uh, Alan J. Hynek came forward with the principles of the Close Encounter range. As we all, many people know, the Close Encounter is the first kind and the second kind. And of course, the third kind, which he named, helped Spielberg name the, the movie. He only got $1,000 out of it, unfortunately, but Close Encounters of the third kind. And as time has progressed, um, there was even a Close Encounters of the fourth kind came forward, especially when more people report, started reporting in an abduction phenomena. Um, so it was thought, well, we're going to need some type of new category here because it's not just sighting of an ET. People are allegedly being taken by them. So we ended up with close encounters of the fourth kind. But then, once we open that barrel, it becomes tricky again because you've got people coming forward and saying, well, I was never taken forcefully. I went willingly. Well, hang on a so, so you went willingly? You, you, uh, well, yeah, I've been having these experiences for a long time and they seem friendly and I went with them and I've been sharing my experiences with these beings. That's not an abduction then, is it? So what is that? Well, it's a contact case. And this is where it became very problematic because CE4 didn't really cover that. It covered alien, you know, alien abductions. So we ended up having a side session, like part, you know, stage one and stage two, where it gets very complicated. One and two of, of, of Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind, where the second part is more the contact cases. And believe me or not, there seems to be equally amount of many contact cases as there have been alien abduction cases. I realise for a lot of people, it started at a certain point, quite often in childhood, but they didn't have it all the way through, whereas for me, I just always had that. So I thought it was completely normal. I thought, oh, surely everyone has, you know, a reptilian growing up with them, don't they? Surely everyone has ETs, you know, greys that come and visit in their room, don't they? So as I got older, I realised, actually, no, most people don't. Uh, at that point growing up, I didn't know anyone else. So that was quite lonely because you don't ever have a, a point of contact of someone else to talk to about this. You can't say, oh, I had this visitation or I had that experience. And if you did go into any of that, uh, obviously you, people would say, oh, that's really weird or you must have imagined it. or which from their perception you can understand, but obviously from yours as a child, you think, so why, why me? Why is no one else having these experiences? It's not really something I could talk to my family about. I think we're on a personal journey here with this. I mean, I wouldn't have known when these things were interacting with me as a small child. I wouldn't have had any, any concept of, that it were actually happening. I would had nobody to talk to. My parents had no idea whatsoever. And when it happens, I don't know, I think you, 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 acceptance is the, is the wrong word, it's, it's a violation, but I don't know, you, would, you, you don't know the signs until you start to mature, until you start to realise that these things are absolutely, alien's the word, alien to everything we know and understand. Obviously you're going to get people who, who look into alien abductions, I've spoke to people who claim to have been abducted. Uh, genuine and disingenuous to be honest with you but you know and you're going to get people who actually think that they've got the answers to this and I don't know I, my gut feeling is that they don't I mean there's only one person understands what's happened to me and that's me and I think that's that goes for an experiencer I mean you will get people who listen to people's stories and 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 try and decipher and try and find patterns but at the end of the day they've not got answers they they may think they have but in my opinion they haven't. The alien abduction phenomena really goes hand in hand with ufology uh, these days, particularly, I mean, a while back it wasn't, that wasn't the case. Uh, it was often nuts and bolts, lights in the sky approach and the alien abduction contact phenomena was totally separate from that. Uh, and when I was contacted by a lady and I was sent this strange image, and this is a video still, uh, she said this, these entities and, and various other entities have been plaguing her all her life. And although the, all, all the experiences weren't negative, she really wanted it to stop. And she'd be complaining to her husband, she'd be telling her husband who would work away at three months a time on the oil rigs. And the, and the children were complaining. So again, we have that DNA connection, the, the, the bloodline, the children were being abducted. Uh, there were military coming into the house and the husband didn't believe a word of this. And it was only when she sent him a recorded message a FaceTime message that he received later down the line because there was a delay on the oil rigs that he saw this entity 
in the video and phoned home immediately. And one might think that that would be enough to uh, wake this guy up to what his family had been telling him for years and years. But it had the absolute opposite effect. This guy just went deeper into denial. And I think it just that demonstrates the power and the taboo nature still of the, uh, the alien abduction phenomena. There's new mysteries of people questioning why has it been going on for so long. Well, we do know through historical records that the alien abduction and the animal mutilation phenomena has been going on for a lot longer than what we initially thought. I mean, you know, when these things came across our table, our desks and offices, they were high, they were high amounts. But then it was a very social driven um, subject. You know, X-Files was very prominent on the television during that time. And, and there was an increase in UFO activity and there was a increase in abduction scenarios, you know, people reporting those experiences. Was it because they looked at the program and thought, hey, do you know what, I'll come out now, I'll come out with what I've experienced. Or, you know, did it encourage people to make up stories and come forward? We don't know. Exactly the same thing happened with Close Encounters of the Third Kind when that came out. You know, Spielberg's famous $18 million movie. When that happened, Incidents of reporting UFOs for the first three years during that film were rocketed, absolutely rocketed. So we know it's a very media-driven subject, this. I think social media has helped in some respects, helped people connect, helped people talk about their experiences, but there's also a lot of disinformation and a, a, a sort of a bullying, trolling sort of type of culture online. So I don't think it's more about, you know, is this phenomena happening it's more these days about the who's what's and the why's i'm not certain why people are being abducted uh, and that's uh, that covers everything that not just the people who are being abducted and there's there's bad things happening good things happening i've just got there's an agenda and it's obviously that we've got something that they need there must be some special ingredient within the physical makeup of mankind that they require uh, and I don't even think it's something that they don't understand they probably fully understand it I mean we're so quick to say how advanced these things are we uh, you get people saying oh they could be thousands of years in advance of us so they probably understand it we're probably just being harvested there's probably something that they need something that benefits them it could even be emotions I've always thought emotions and, and, emo and emotional states seem seem to facilitate happenings uh, they seem to evoke things and it could be the fact that we are able to create love laughter tears emotional states it could be it, it, it could be just something as simple as that that they like emotional states the fact that they put me in complete and utter terror and fear as a child is an emotional state that they may have derived some pleasure from other people might be able to portray or, or, or evoke immense feelings of love. I, I don't know, and I might be talking absolute rubbish here, but it's all in the air. None of us really know. I think the animal mutilations are a bit of a mystery. There's still a number of theories out there, but I, I certainly think there is a link to human abduction. There may even be a link to missing people. I mean, that's something that... Paul Sinclair looks into here in the UK and um, everybody's familiar with David Pallides but Paul Sinclair has been doing that for a long time but connecting those dots is a very is very difficult it's uh, and years are back when you the freedom of information requests were of some use you know you could get valuable information nowadays it's more about knocking on doors feet on the ground and networking and many times we'll be contacted by whistleblowers who, who really don't want to go on camera sometimes they don't want to speak on the phone but what we realized is that all of this networking that's either done via you know cell phones mobile phones social media in particular is certainly being monitored we have evidence of that and many of the researchers that I work with have been warned about speaking to certain people they've been told to stop looking into certain events so there's obviously something very secretive in, in indeed most researchers will tell you that the the alien abduction the alien contact scenario phenomena is the biggest secret 
It is my theory, and amongst others now, that when we start looking at what's being taken from the animals, soft tissue, that it's something to do with the mucous membrane. It's the, it's the immunity system. What we also know is that these animals are being taken whilst they're awake and conscious because they want to induce fear, huge amounts of fear. Now, what happens when we induce fear into even to the human body? You know, when people are having fearful experiences, you know, we get that urge to say, oh, it's fast. You know, when we see a UFO, we're glamorized by this. The beautiful lights in the sky, we're glamored. And of course, what we're not being careful about is about what we really should be doing, our warning mechanisms, our survival sense is saying, hey, get the hell out of there. When in fact, we're glamoured and going, oh, I'm taking a step forward when we should be taking a step back. People do have bad experiences. You know, it's not all love and light, this phenomena. And the thing is, is that when it comes to the cattle mutilation and other animal mutilations, it would seem that the soft tissue is where areas will congregate of of the immunity system, the mucous membrane. And it goes into overload at times of fear, the fight or flight scenario. So maybe they're purposely inducing fear into the animals at the time. They're taking the soft tissue where immunity lies and they're, and they're studying the immune system. Maybe they're trying to work out how they don't, how they don't die from a common cold, for example. Because they tell you, if they get to the point where they can get, uh, be here, and not worry about the diseases that we can cope with on a regular basis, then I think the world's going to be a big, diff a very different place. So now a lot of people will say that military, obviously we know that that term, my lab, means military abductions, but military is sort of a broad term that we use. We know that there are factions and, you know, black operatives from all those factions that fall under the umbrella of the military. So. Pinpointing who exactly is responsible is, is next to impossible. But a lot of the contactees now feel they're here for some sort of mission, uh, almost obligated, if you like, to experience the, a human life. And they might, they feel they have to fulfill some sort of mission. They have some ob objective, whether that be raising consciousness, whether that be uh, just to live out the human experience, or whether that be to help other experiences and, and other other human beings perhaps in a similar situation. You Like everyone you do have doubts at certain points and you do have your bad days thinking why did I agree to this? What was I thinking? I must have been mad. But I had a wonderful experience uh, with a lovely group of greys, some tall, some small, on board a craft and at that point I was going through a lot of negativity with the military Lots of Chinook helicopters going over where I lived every day. I'd been approached by the secret society by this point. And I just sat there and I thought, oh, I can't believe I signed up to this. It was just a really bad day, a really bad day. So I said to them, I, I need some sort of sign from you. I need some sort of contact that this is what I've agreed to because I, I'm really doubting this. I, I really need some help with this. So about three days later was taken aboard the craft with the greys and they all gathered around me in a circle and put their hands on my body and for moments I knew everything not just about my life I knew everything that had ever happened in the past with this universe and other universes everything that was happening in that moment and everything in the future and I was just so overwhelmed. I was so happy and joyful and crying because it was beautiful. Even all the bad stuff that you could see from the past and the present and the future, there was so much love, there was so much light, there was so much joy. And I thought, oh yes, I did agree to this. And everything that's happening is what's meant to be. And that's why I can say with such certainty, particularly when I do my lectures, the darkness will not win. It will not win because I've seen it and I know it and I feel it. So that's why I can be so certain about it. So, I mean, for me, that experience was life changing because it really affirmed, yes, I am here for a purpose and it's all going as it should go. One thing is for sure, they all seem to have a similar agenda, no matter where they're coming from. And if these things are all coming from different planets, then isn't it funny that you all seem to have a similar agenda? And that is to conduct experiments with us um, to find out about plants and soil maybe 
um, and uh, and to tell us that you know we've got to be careful about the planet and you know, can't forget that one. Um, it's it's very intriguing, but this is where this deception comes in because some some researchers now are kind of considering. Hang on a second. Are we being shown? Is there screen memory going on here? I mean, we've had witnesses come forward and say, "Well, my experience has started off when I saw a white owl at the window." Well, was it really a white owl? Or was it a white horse's head that popped out of a bush? Was it really? You know? Uh, or I saw a clown's face come out the wall. Oh, how many people have actually clown phobias? You should actually start tapping the source and start interviewing these people. You'll find that there's a lot of paranormal things going on. These things can seem to somehow take control of what we already have, the mechanisms within ourselves. We know screen memories are produced through um, trauma uh, type cases. We know that happens with people, you know, yeah, especially those that have been involved in accidents, you know, severe accidents. Uh, the brain can do that. It is quite rare that people remember the whole experience. They'll, they'll remember part. And I mean, that can be frightening enough. And there can be different reasons as to why people remember. Sometimes they'll let you remember because they want to frighten you. It's, oh, so you've obviously, you've been, you've been naughty, you've been bad. So we're gonna let you remember a little bit just to frighten you enough to stop whatever you're doing. You know, trying to make connections, trying to get the word out there, whether it's through internet or doing lectures or whatever it is. Sometimes it's a little frightener. And I understand that most people think at that point, oh, okay, this is a bit too much for me. I, I'm, I'm gonna stop or I'm gonna completely ignore this. You know, some people will have the regressions, which is great because, you know, I've had regressions myself with my friend, Barbara Lamb and Mary Rodwell. Fantastic, because you, it's like peeling at an onion and just all the time you're learning. I understand for a lot of people, it's too frightening. They don't want to have a regression to remember all of it. Sometimes the little bits that they do remember it is bad enough. Probably something like 90% of all genuine, and I, I really emphasise the word, genuine experiences will have had my lab at some point. And because the human governments are absolutely determined to find out what it is about individuals that, that makes the aliens interested in them. And they want to find out what they've seen, what they know, um, and it's a, it's a big game for the Earth governments to try and catch up with the aliens to see exactly who's been interacted with. I have one experience which I went public with all three or four years ago, which is 1971, where there were humans involved in what was going on and they were dressed in white coats, they were doctors. Um, but they, it wasn't their show. In other words, they were involved but they weren't actually allowed to touch me. With most MyLab situations, true MyLab situations, the, um, the abductee will get taken to an underground base, and it's usually an underground facility, and humans, military Earth humans, with aliens in present will deal with them, and it's often the humans that will incapacitate that individual and then do what they need to do with them. So the point about MyLab is that in some cases they're working with the aliens, for the aliens agenda and in other cases they're working behind the aliens back attempting to understand what it is about these certain humans that makes them so precious to the aliens. What I found that I hadn't discovered before was the most traumatized, the most scared were ones that seemed to have a different kind of experience called my lab and this is the military orchestrated abductions and these are ones where you know their trauma was off the scale often and they didn't know how to deal with it because it's one thing blaming it on ETs, it's another when you understand that there are people within governments that are orchestrating this kind of experience and there's a lot of agendas that go with that and I have now met quite a number, not only in, uh, in America but in, in Australia and, and the UK that have this MyLab adjunct to their ET experiences and sometimes it's very hard to separate them out some of these deep black elements of the military are working in collusion with non-human life forms, some of whom are reptilians. Also, they, they work with some of the greys and some of, and a variety of other beings. I, I, I encourage the viewer to, uh, to check out Dr. Carla Turner's book, Taken, 
uh, Inside the Alien Abduction Syndrome, which still stands the test of time. That book came out like in the late 90s, but uh, it, it still holds up. It, it, it talks about eight different women who were alien abductees who were also being taken by different factions of the military. And all factions of the military seem to be involved. Deep black elements of the Navy, deep black elements of the Army, deep black elements of the Air Force, along with aerospace and, and, and medical uh, components, covert elements where a my lab would find themselves in some medical dispensary or medical facility either in an above ground installation a remote highly secure above ground installation or often is not in an underground base uh, where they would be examined uh, poked and prodded and so on and so forth by medical personnel so these were the kind of cases that we were coming up with later on dr helmet lammers uh, or lammer I think he's since passed on, but he coined the term my labs, which stands for military abductees. Now, unfortunately, Dr. Lammer's take is that all these accounts by these people of seeing aliens were merely the result of like CIA drug induced hallucinations. But, uh, but he's wrong about that. My understanding so far has been that certainly there does seem to be some of the greys and some of the reptilians seem to be the main ones that seem to come through with the my lab. But what a lot of people don't understand, and it's something I've only in the last few years learned, there seems to be um, some that look like the greys and some that look like reptilians seem to be, um, if you like, grown or cloned. And these are programmed by military that are not in fact the genuine article. So that in itself, they're called program life forms and they're programmed as I say, and there is a different energy signature between those and the real ones and um, some gentlemen that I've heard of testimony um, have said that to meet them there is a coldness and um, a real sense of fear around them it's like they really do feel very dark and so again it's it's it must be very hard for a frightened experiencer to be in a scenario where they're facing one of these program life forms and believing that this is an ET um, and in fact it isn't so it's a very, very complex, um, uh, if you like, um, and with many layers, which was, you know, I'm still as a researcher trying to work out. Some of these my labs are able to interface with certain types of ET technology. What some of the more advanced ET races have done as a fail-safe security measure is they, they've ensured that only certain beings with a certain DNA strain are able to interface, activate, work with ET technology. So say the military recovers a craft, but they can't even open the thing, right? What they'll do is, based on what the ET, uh, ET, ETs tell them, whatever process that they use to determine these things, they will bring my lab, sometimes even children, uh, to these craft and test them one after the other to see if the, the craft recognizes them, if you will. And sometimes the craft will light up, Hatches will open up, the, the child will walk in there, sit down to the control panel, everything lights up because it recognizes the morphogenetic blueprint resonance of the DNA. That's what's going on. Uh, DNA is a currency of the universe. From the military point of view with these individuals is to convince, first to find out what they experience on the craft. They want to know what the ETs are up to. They want to know their agendas. They want to know what they're teaching them on the craft, for example. Um, because they use a lot of consciousness, they learn to they learn to levitate things. They learn to do a lot of things with um, with uh, their their consciousness, which we don't learn normally, obviously, in third dimensional reality. So they want to know all about that. They want to get a sense of what different species are up to. When they've done all of that, and it may be through drugging and hypnosis, um, sometimes trauma as well. They also um, part of the agenda is to make them believe that these, this, is, this is all orchestrated by dark species or whatever, so that if they ever do talk about it, then what they're saying is that it's these dark ETs and this is all orchestrated by them. That is part of the disinformation side of it. So with all of that, um, 
and I remember one lady describing a reptilian coming over and basically threatening to eat the, eat the person if they didn't do as they were told and all the rest of it, and it was terrifying. So they've got all of this as a terrifying ordeal, which they also know um, that no one's ever going to believe. It's one thing saying I'm on a craft and there's a strange being doing this to me. People can almost say, oh, well, ETs have got to, you know, they're weird, they, you know, they can do that. They don't expect it to be orchestrated by some form of cooperation or military ET cooperation like that. But that's, that's giving you an overview of the types of things that happen through my lab. And there's a lot of other things as well, but the primary agenda is disinformation, in my understanding, as well as getting as much information about what happens on the craft, because it, usually when they pick people up, it's because they're experiences. Most people who are having these my lab experiences become very, very confused because they don't know what they're really representing. First they were thought the ETs were good, then they're not so good, or are they? Uh, or are they, is that, is that a faction and that's a faction, or do they work with the military, or are they really truly ETs? Maybe that's the reason. Maybe they just want to confuse the hell out of these individuals. Essentially, once you realise that, as James Bartley has said before, that DNA is the currency of the universe, and I think he's spot on, I think that's a, an excellent analogy. It's obvious if contactees were being visited by ET races, it was only a matter of time before the, these deep black elements of the military wanted to know what it is the, the ET races want or what it is that's special about the contactee, or both, most likely. These beings, if that is the case, then they aren't exactly what we thought they were. You know, I mean, get it right, are they interdimensional? Are they extraterrestrial? The time travellers? Are they us from the future? Are they some type of spiritual being? It's, you know, I've, where do you begin with this? And this is the problem because we're told so many things. Maybe that's us being confused. We're confused. We're not given the full information. We're not given the clear picture. We're told so many different things. What are they? Where did they come from? What did they want? Well, it seems like they've been here for a long time. This phenomenon is age old. But as time goes on, we're changing. We're adapting to trying to find out more about this phenomenon. And that's what's interesting, it's our development. I think the phenomena has stayed pretty much the same for eons. But we're kind of picking up things now and putting pieces together and kind of working things out. And that's what makes it very exciting. Like I was saying in my lecture, there's good and bad in every race, every country, every planet. So yes, although there are very negative ETs and greys and so forth, there are also very, very positive ones. So yes, there has been a huge focus on reptilians and greys and oh, they're all evil and they want to take over the world and they're in the banking system and in the governments. And yes, there is an element of truth to that, but there seems to be a lot of people out there that they go on the internet and they read these things or they read a book and they take that opinion on, which is only the opinion of someone else or various other people and they just accept that as fact when it's only an opinion. You know, we get snippets of truth, bits of truth, but I think there's perhaps many agendas behind this and some of those agendas, I fear, are probably so dark that to disclose that to the human population, along with the fact that you you would have to say that you can't control it. The military can't control this. If they could control it, it wouldn't be top secret. They, they can't control certain factions of these ET races. At the end of the day, um, science are kind of still in the grey area, I'd say, excuse the pun. Um, what that basically means is that you've got academics who just won't go there. They're just, <laughs> do you know what, I, I'd give that a miss. And you've got some academics who will say, do you know what, I'm going for it. What the hell with everybody, you know? Uh, and great for them. I absolutely, you know, admire those people for doing that. It takes a lot of guts uh, because we're dealing with a society. It's us. We're dealing with a problem, it's us. We're dealing with a society that are quite happy to, to, to cast stones at people for, for a different way of thinking. Aren't we seeing that across all society even these days? We are.